Okay, so I thought I'd talk through another one of my photo manipulations that I've done and the links to all the pictures I've used are in the description. So I'm starting off with the ground and I first need to remove the sky. So I'm going to the plus at the top and I'm adding a mask layer. I'm then going to the fill tool and I'm making the first point on the sky and I'm dragging down towards the ground and I'm changing the bottom point colour to white and the top point colour to black and it's the black point that will remove the sky so now it's just a transparent background. Once I'm happy with that I'm then going to the adjustments and I'm adding a colour balance adjustment which I'm going to drag onto the ground layer and by doing that it just means that the colour balance adjustment is only going to affect the ground layer that I've dragged it onto. And because this picture is going to be very blue, I need to make the ground blue as well. So I need to try and remove as much of the orange colours as possible. So I'm starting in the midtones range and I'm dragging the left slider over to the left, which will add some cyan in the midtones. And then I'm moving to the yellow and blue slider and I'm dragging it to the right, which is going to add some blue. And then the middle slider I'm dragging over to the right, which will add some green. I've then moved to the highlights range and I'm starting with the left slider again and I'm dragging that to the left to around minus 50 and then the right slider to the blue to 15% and then I've moved to the shadows range and I'm dragging the right slider again to the blue and then the middle slider I'm dragging to the left which will add some magenta and the left slider I'm dragging to the left to minus 23% and then I've gone back to the blue and I'm dragging it up to 58% and then the middle slider to minus 6% okay and now I'm adding a brightness and contrast adjustment and I'm bringing the brightness down to minus 94% and then I've added a fill layer by clicking the plus sign at the top and then going to fill layer and I've dragged that to sit underneath the ground layer and I'm changing the colour to a dark teal kind of blue and this is basically going to be the sky this is what's going to sit behind the waterfall now I need to start adding some light into the picture and this will be where the waterfall is going to go and so I'm keeping the tone of the blue pretty much the same but I'm just making it lighter And then I'm making sure to add a pixel layer so I'm not painting this on an existing layer and then I can't change it. And I've made the size of the brush quite big so all I really need to do is just tap on the screen a few times. And now I'm doing the same again but I'm not going to be dragging it out as far. I've added another pixel layer and again I'm keeping the tone of the colour quite similar but making it brighter than the last one. I'm keeping it kind of within the last bit of light that I added. And now I'm adding in the waterfall. And I'm first just dragging out the corners. And then I'm adding a mask layer to that and I'm using the paintbrush with the colour on black. And I don't really like this bit on the left so I'm removing it. And I'm changing the blend mode to vivid light. And then I'm dragging out the corners to make it a bit bigger. And now I want to add some light underneath the waterfall so I've added a new pixel layer and I'm colour selecting the blue in the waterfall. And 
I've changed the blend mode to lighten and I've brought the opacity down to 55%. I don't want that to be going as far out to the edges as it is so I'm using the erase tool and the opacity is quite low, it's on 19% and I'm removing that pixel layer a little bit from the edges and on the ground. So I've added another fill layer and I'm dragging that onto the ground layer and it should be the same colour as the previous one but if not just colour select the last fill layer. I think that light that I added around the waterfall is a bit harsh so I've gone to that layer and I'm bringing the opacity down a little bit more. And then I'm going back to that fill layer that I just added for the ground and I'm bringing the opacity down to 25%. So now I'm adding in the house but I first need to cut it out and remove it from its background. And I'm using the pen tool to do it. And if you are struggling to use the pen tool, just keep practicing with it, that's how I figured it out. And as you can see with the amount of times I've just pressed undo, that I'm still not great at it. But I'm definitely better than I was when I first tried to use it. So once I've done that, I'm clicking to selection and then I'm adding a mask layer and that will then remove the background and deselect. And now we need to get rid of these little bits where you can still see the background so I'm using the pen tool again and I'm clicking to selection and using the erase brush I'm just painting over the selection to remove it. So now I need to make the house blend into the grass so I've added a mask layer and I'm changing my brush to a grass brush and I'll leave this brush linked in the description. And I'm using the second brush from the top. And I'm making the brush quite small. Now I'm just basically painting over the bottom edge of the house. And now I need to change the colours of the house in the same way I changed the grass, so I've added a colour balance adjustment. And I'm starting in the mid-tones range. I'm starting with the first slider and I'm dragging it over to the left to minus 72% and the right slider over to the blue to 78%. And now I've gone to the shadows range and I'm bringing the right slider to the blue to 56% and the left slider to minus 12%. And now I've added a brightness and contrast adjustment and I'm dragging the brightness down to 100%. I've made it really dark for now and using the paintbrush tool with the colour on black I can remove some of that brightness and contrast adjustment as the waterfall is the light source in the photo, I'm going to be removing the brightness and contrast adjustment from the roof of the house, which is where I think the light would bounce off.
and if I change the colour back to white I can bring back the brightness and contrast adjustment. So now I need to make the shadow of the house. So I'm making sure to be on the house layer and I'm holding my finger on the screen until options come up and I'm clicking duplicate and I've rasterized that duplicate layer. So I'm first going to the transform studio and I'm rotating the house and I'm dragging that to sit right underneath. And then I'm going to the filter studio and I'm going to distortions, turning on add live filters and I've added a perspective filter. So I'm kind of making the shadow go towards the bottom left corner of the photo. And now I need to make the shadow completely dark. So I've added an exposure adjustment and I'm dragging that onto the shadow house layer. And I'm dragging the exposure completely to the left, which will make it black. And then I've gone back to the filter studio and I'm going to blurs and I'm adding a Gaussian blur and I'm bringing the radius up to 8.1 and I'm using this just to blur the edges out so they're not as sharp and harsh and then I'm bringing down the opacity to 62% and using the move tool I'm dragging the bottom corner up just so I can see more of the shadow. and I'm making sure the bottom of it kind of aligns right with the house. And then I'm bringing down the opacity a little bit more to 37%. And I want to add some shadow to make the bottom of the house a bit darker. And I'm dragging the corners to make that shadow a long, thin line. And then I'm bringing down the opacity to around 74%. So now I want to add some more shadow onto the house itself. And so I've made another pixel layer and then I'm colour selecting the blue behind the waterfall. And I'm painting that on the left side of the house. I've changed the blend mode to multiply and I've brought down the opacity to 50%. I've added a mask layer to the big shadow and I want to remove some of it so that it fades out a bit more. So the shadow will be darker at the base of the house and then sort of fade out. And now I'm bringing in the picture of the little girl and I'm using the smart selection brush to cut her out. And I've gone to the refine selection tool just to refine the selection around her hair. And I'm clicking apply and then adding a mask layer. And for some reason it's done this so I need to drag that mask layer onto the girl. And deselect. 
So the selection isn't perfect. There's this white line going around her. So I'm on the mask layer for the girl. I'm using the paintbrush tool with the colour on black and I'm going to try my best to remove that line. So I need to make her look as though she's running through the grass rather than just sitting on top of it. And I've gone back to that mask layer and I'm changing my brush to the same grass brush I used for the house. And again, I'm using the second one down. I'm making the brush really small and I'm just kind of removing some of her feet as you wouldn't be able to see that in fairly long grass. And again, I need to make the colours match the same as everything else. And so I've added a colour balance adjustment. I'm in the mid-tones range and I'm moving the first slider over to the left to 46% and the right slider over to the right to 78%. And I've moved to the highlights range and again, I'm dragging the first slider over to the left to minus 33% and the blue slider over to the right to 18%. I'm now in the shadows range and I'm moving the fair slider to the left to minus 22% and the blue slider to the right to 56%. I've added a brightness and contrast adjustment and I'm bringing the brightness down to around minus 92%. I'm going back to the mask layer for the girl and I'm removing a bit more of that white line. And then I've added an exposure adjustment to the girl. And I'm bringing that down to around minus 1.3%. And to make the shadow for the girl, I'm just basically doing the same thing that I did with the house. So I'm duplicating and then rotating her layer. And I've rasterized it and then I'm adding an exposure adjustment to make the shadow completely black. and I'm bringing down the opacity. And then I'm adding a Gaussian blur and I'm making sure that the add live filters is on. And I'm bringing the radius up to around 3.3. And I'm bringing the opacity down a little bit more. To around 64%. And I'm making sure that the feet line up. And again, I'm removing some of the shadow that's furthest away from the girl, just to give it a little bit of a fade. I'm adding a perspective filter and I'm trying to make the shadow go slightly to the left. And 
I'm adding a pixel layer and I'm dragging that to sit above the light layer that I added on top of the waterfall. And I'm colour selecting the brightest bit of blue. I'm changing my brush back to a normal round brush. And I'm adding that light at the end of the waterfall and going up it a little bit. I'm changing the blend mode to add and I'm bringing down the opacity to 56%. And on a new pixel layer I'm colour selecting the dark blue and I'm painting that around the corners of the picture. And I'm bringing the opacity down to around 50%. And I'm doing the same again but making the blue slightly darker and I'm only painting this on the very bottom of the picture just because it's further away from the waterfall so it's not going to be as bright and I've changed the blend mode to multiply and I've brought the opacity down to 35% And now to add some more blue into the picture, I've added a channel mixer adjustment. And I'm moving the blue slider to the right to 106% and the green slider to the left to minus 7% and then I've added a curves adjustment and I'm bringing down the top right point which will bring the whites down in the picture and I'm bringing the bottom left point up a tiny bit which will bring up the blacks and then I've moved to the red channel and I'm bringing the top right point down which will add some blue into the highlights and the left point to the right which will add some blue into the shadows. And then I'm moving to the blue channel and I'm moving the right point down to add a tiny bit of yellow in the highlights and the left point up to add some blue into the shadows. Then I'm going back to the very bright bit of light that I added onto the waterfall and I'm changing the blend mode to vivid light instead. And I'm putting the opacity on around 43%. So now I've added in the stars and I'm dragging that to the bottom of the layers but above the fill layer. I'm changing the blend mode to screen and I'm going to this box and I'm dragging the left point down about halfway and this kind of removes some of the blacks in the picture so the stars will be a lot sharper and I want to make those stars a little bit smaller but I still want it to cover the whole image so I'm just making it smaller and then I'm duplicating it and bringing that over to the left to fill that space. And I'm removing some of the stars that I don't want using the erase tool. And then I'm highlighting them both and putting them in a group so I can edit them together. And I'm bringing down the opacity to around 50%.
and I want to brighten up the image a little bit so I've added an exposure adjustment. And then I'm removing a little bit of that exposure adjustment just around the edges of the picture. And I'm bringing down the exposure a little bit more on that bright light on the waterfall. And I'm removing a little bit of that light at the end of the waterfall using the erase tool. I've added a pixel layer and I'm adding a little bit more shadow onto the house. And I'm bringing down the opacity to 46%. And now I've added a noise filter and you don't have to do this bit but I just like it. and I'm bringing the intensity up to 6% and I'm turning on protect alpha which just stops the edges of the picture from going a little bit weird. And now to darken the picture a little bit I've added a brightness and contrast adjustment and I'm bringing the brightness down to around 30% and the contrast up to 2%. And I'm removing some of that adjustment from the waterfall and the centre of the picture. And I'm adding a little bit more light to the picture. I've changed the blend mode to screen and I'm bringing the opacity down to around 30%. 